Hey, everybody. Welcome back to At The Table. I am really excited about today's conversation with Lindsay and Amy from Girl Talk Ministries. Welcome to At The Table, y'all. I'm so glad you're with me today. Thank you for having us. We're excited. (laughs) Very excited to get into this conversation because I think so many of us um, are walking with, are um, mentoring, or we're parenting students and young women, whether that's college or teenagers. And so today's episode is going to be all about um, really walking alongside them and discipling them and making sure that they are not only seeing Jesus um, in, in who he is in their life, but then also how to walk through some really difficult things that they are having to experience over these last couple of years, especially coming out of COVID and just all of the anxiety, depression, everything that is really kind of um, hitting our inboxes with so many statistics of Gen Z and bit below them. And so I'm um, really, really pumped to have y'all here for you to share your story and your wisdom. So let's get started with just a little bit about you guys. Tell me where you're recording, how you two got together, um, and a little bit about yourselves. <laughs> you start. Okay. I'm Amy and I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, which is going to tie into where, how we got together. Um, but for me, just quick, like my dad died when I was 11 in fifth grade going into sixth grade. So that's really what shapes my story and just who I am and where I come from. And, um, and then girl talk. So that's about a little bit about me. You can go. <laughs> I am Lindsay and, um, we are currently in right above Birmingham in Hayden, Alabama. And, um, I grew up, uh, my parents divorced when I was two years old, so I did not see a family structure growing up, and and there were a lot of hard years in there, but I always saw Jesus in my family, my my dad's family, and so um, I didn't necessarily grow up in church, but I knew there was something else that I wanted that, that I just didn't have, and so through the years, the Lord just used all that, drew me closer to Him, and really gave me a heart to love other girls and show them eventually as he has unfolded my story and just show them who he is despite where they've been and what he actually wants for them despite where they are. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm currently married um, um, to Kevin. We have 10 children together. I have five children from my previous marriage, my first marriage. Um, And then Kevin also has five children from his first marriage. So we married about five years ago and we're, we need a lot of space up here in Hayden. So here we are. (laughs) I love it. I don't feel like y'all have like the typical Alabama. What do you call people from Alabamian, Alabamans, Alabamians? (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Alabamians. Uh, You don't have like the accent or the draw. Thank you. (laughs) People have always told me that like people think I'm from the North, the way I I talk. I think it's. I grew up watching so much TV. That's really, that shaped more my accent than anything. (laughs) Well, I love it. And I appreciate you guys sharing, even just um, going back into your childhood and really kind of pointing out and highlighting that that's a big piece of where um, God put together pieces and this thread of what you're doing today. So take me back to teenage Lindsay and teenage Amy and the... Um, you know, specifically, I think coming from um, broken families and just hard situations, they're speaking about divorce and the loss of a parent. So talk to me a little bit about just as teenagers, what y'all really wrestled with, like where you were having a hard time really kind of seeing God um, and and wrestling through some really hard things as teenagers. You go first. (laughs) Okay. Um, So losing my dad, I definitely just felt really alone. Like my, everyone obviously goes through grief differently. And so I dealt with grief a lot differently than the, my family that was around me. And so I thankfully ran to church because I knew, I mean, my dad loved Jesus as much as I can remember as a 10 year old, like he really is the one that got us in church and like wanted us to be there. So he was a good example of that. And so I really had a choice at 11 years old when he died, like, am I going to run away from everything that he had always taught me? Or am I going to run to him to, to God? And so, um, I mean, as much as an 11 year old can make that decision, I really, I wanted to be in church and I wanted to be around the people that seemed like they were loving me and they were happy and they were nice. And, um, and so, but I think I did, I put that a little bit above God. Like I put I put the people of God above my relationship with God because I just didn't have anyone else around me. And so I really struggled like middle school and high school with just the balance of 
um, of my relationships in the world. Like, I mean, even, even in the church, but like my human relationships and my relationship with God. And I really, that was really the basis of everything I struggled with is like who I was going to run to first and mm-hmm. really realizing now as a, like an adult having to go back and realize like our human relationships are really important, but they're not as, as important as God and just figuring out that balance and all of that. So that was my struggles, like pretty much through everything in teenage years of me, just learning to trust God more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's just normal because I experienced the same things, just loneliness because, um, my mom, of course, was a single mom, had to work full time and she was tired when she came home and she wasn't a believer. And so she tried to find happiness in a lot of other areas in her life that ultimately led to destruction. Mm-hmm. And my father, I know he loved me, but he had to move somewhere else to um, to find provision. And he had his own business and he had to move into another area to build homes. And so I did see him once a month. I talked to him, you know, once a week, but it was like a 10 minute conversation. And, you know, as girls, we just need more than that. And so high school was just lonely and I didn't have the normal security to be a normal kid, just going and doing normal things. So I was very quiet, very shy, didn't talk to anybody unless they talked to me first and nobody really knew. They just thought, oh, she's shy. She's so sweet. Like nobody knew the inner pain and loneliness that I felt on a daily basis. And so um, I, I think what that, I might be jumping ahead, but I think just seeing that and recognizing that as an adult is really what has driven us to create this ministry as the Lord brought us together a couple of years ago, a few years ago, to really help parents understand that that as teenagers, they are looking to the outside, everything mm-hmm. on the outside, whether it's materialism or just acceptance. Um, in relationships. And that's why it's so important for us to be so present, which I'm sure is what we'll get to in a few minutes, but Mm -hmm. to be so present the way God created the parents to be the, um, the reflection of his presence and love in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate y'all sharing so much. And even as you're talking, you know, even within my own story, I think loneliness is a big thing. And then even thinking back to just a few weeks ago, having lunch with one of my women at church and well, two really, even in the same week, and they're expressing the same thing, just how they feel lonely and isolated and disconnected. And so I know that this is a epidemic. Like I know that this is a lived real experience, not only back for teenage years for y'all, but very much today for women of all different ages. And so y'all kind of have a great pulse. I know y'all are taking in some data from y'all's website on like the top three struggles that girls are facing right now. And so as you are in the trenches, listening to them, getting their feedback, getting those um, kind of inquiries and everything from your website. And as you talk to them, share with us a little bit about what you're seeing with our students, like how are they struggling specifically? Um, and is it the same as what you guys were going with? Or do you see some more kind of harder circumstances with what they're facing today because of social media and, and those elements that we didn't necessarily have with growing up? Um, tell us a little bit about just kind of some of the data that you're seeing and what you're hearing from them. I think Amy has a great um, understanding of where the struggles come from. But as far as what the struggles are themselves, I think it's been the same across all generations. I think it's harder because of just there's more distraction these days. So just with that being said, you can answer actually what she's talking okay. about. Um, I think the biggest thing that we see is, and this kind of goes into there's there's the balance of moms and girls, which is like why girl talk is what it is, but girls are really busy and there's so much to do. And I think like moms feel the need and feel the pressure to like get their kids to do everything and not say no to every, like, it's just, it's such a hard balance, but I've, we've definitely seen girls are just, they're really busy and they have way too much to do. And there's just things, they don't know how to say no to things and they feel bad to say no to things. And so they're stressed, they're pressured to do everything. They're pressured to do what everyone else is doing, to have everything that everyone else is doing. And it just makes them tired. And all of that goes into it. And then their relationship with Christ 
is what falls out of it. And I mean, that's, uh, that's what we, I mean, that's what I experienced as a teenager, but it's like what you're saying, like, it's just, it's different now because they do have social media. And so we talk to girls that are, they're worried about their weight and they're worried about like what they look like and the, the clothes that they have. And it's different. I mean, when, when we were growing up, it was magazines that we were looking at and seeing things, but now, I mean, they have their phones and I mean, we all talk about this all the time, but it's just, it's, on, in their phone, in their hand at all times, they're looking at what everyone else is doing and they feel like they're not doing enough. I mean, we experienced that as adults, just looking at everything and mm-hmm. like realizing like, I mean, I just wrote about this the other day. I actually think I took it from 2020 and like posted it because it was still so relevant of like, we look at everything that everyone else is doing and it makes what we are doing seem insignificant because it's just like, it's not something to post about, but everyone else is posting about everything. And so I think that's like the, the bear, like the core of everything that everyone's doing and struggling with, but it's the priorities. And I think girls look to their moms, which is a big thing. Like, like what you're talking about with being quiet. Like I was so quiet. And I remember asking one of the, one of my friends in high school, like, what do you think guys like think about me? I think it's like my senior year. And I was like, I wonder what guys think about me. And she was just like, they don't. And I was like, what, what? And she they just, they probably just don't think about you because you're so quiet. Like they just don't even like, and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, that's good, I guess. I don't know, but it was just so, but it was just that same thing. Like it's, everyone is hurting. Like girls are hurting so much and they are expressing it all differently. Just like we all go through everything differently. And, um, and it's just back to the loneliness. Like we, they all feel lonely and they don't know how to get out of it and they just make themselves busy and they run around in circles, which we all know, like, that's just the, I think it's, yeah, Mm -hmm. like it's the culture of just keep yourself busy and it won't hurt so bad. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What are you doing? How are you getting there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I love that you even kind of pointed out, Lindsay, like that you were quiet, but that there was a lot of things happening. And I think so many times we can be so busy as parents or as leaders, you know, and adults, and we are taking everything kind of at face value. And then maybe wondering in the back of our head, like, is is she really okay? You know, like, is he really telling me the truth? But then we honestly don't have the tools or know how to really like engage and dive into, okay, tell me what's really going on tell me um, you know, like how your friendships and relationships are going. And a lot of times, especially with young people, like they don't know how to verbalize what's happening in them, right? Like they're trying to make sense of everything and they're taking things from kind of the outside world and what they're seeing or perceiving and trying to make sense of it. And so I love how part of girl talk is, and you've mentioned it several times is moms and their daughters that there is this, and even not um, biological, you know, like we're talking spiritual mothers as well. And women in the church that are able to come along alongside young women. And so how would you encourage, or maybe tell us about some of the conversations that you're having with moms to where the mom is feeling overwhelmed of like, there's so many things happening culturally. There's so many things that like, even with social media and the digital space that it's like, you constantly feel like you were behind, right? Like we're still trying to figure out (laughs) some of the most simple things, you know, and they know how to do it all. So Talk to me a little bit about like what conversations you're having with moms and maybe even some advice on how do you get past the, yeah, my day was fine. Or, um, like, I don't know, how do you tap into the mind, the heart and soul of a teenage girl, which probably could be its own, like five next episodes. Right. (laughs) Right. Right. I think, you know, this is really, this is what the Lord showed me, um, just really years ago when my when my first child was born, he's 20 years old now. And I was an only child. And then I ended up, I always wanted the bigger family, right? I wanted to surround myself with more, um, with more people because I wanted the happiness that I saw other people having. And then when I started getting it, you know, when my second child was born and then my third child was born, I was literally having temper tantrums in my bedroom because they were fighting with each other. And I was like, (laughs) what is going on? We're supposed to be this fun, happy family. It's supposed to be perfect, right? Because I think myself and all of us as moms have this picture of what we want our family to look like, right? We we have the picture in our mind. We, um, everything we want our children to accomplish and just how everything is going to be perfect. Um, but it doesn't go that way. But if you think about it, and this is what the Lord taught me in the very beginning, he said, what did I create? What did I give you in the beginning? 
You know, like before we had all this stuff, what did I give you? What was the first thing that everybody had? Well, I mean, you know, Adam and Eve were born in the garden. They God didn't give them anything but fellowship and food. And, and so when you break it down and you say, okay, what does my family need? And then you look at Proverbs 14, one, and it says a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down. You're thinking, okay, so how am I going to build this? Mm-hmm. And then I, of course, I don't want to do anything to tear it down. So you have to number one, look at what I always remind parents of moms, moms, <laughs> I don't talk to a lot of dads. Um, but I talked to the moms and I say, okay, how are you building your home? I had to, you know, examine myself. How am I building my home? Um, what do I really need in order to build that? It's really just time. Okay. God gave us all time and gives us all the same amount of time. And then of course I have to build my relationship first with Christ, you know, make sure that there's time for that relationship with him. Okay. Um, to married moms, I say, how are you building your husband up? You know, what, what's the foundation of your family? It's your husband, it's you and your husband, it's your marriage. And then once you build your marriage, you can build your children. It's really, you're allowing your husband to build the family. So how are you looking to your husband to build your family? Now to a single mom, I would say, okay, Isaiah 54 says, that the Lord, your God is your maker. He is your husband. Okay. So look to him, Jehovah Jireh. He's your provider of all things, whatever you need, you know, Adonai, he is so good. He's our, our Lord and master of daily living. He is not going to, he's not going to forget anything that we need. And so as moms get busy and thinking they need to do all this stuff to create this perfect picture, all we're doing is looking at the circumstances. We're looking at what we have or what we can accomplish And then we compare ourselves to others and well, that just produces fear. Like we're not doing enough. We're not, we're not getting it all right. We're not having the right things. And so that leads us to first Peter three that says, you know, um, I have it open because I just, I love this verse and you can't leave any part of it out. But first Peter three says, wives in the same way, be submissive to your husband so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. And when they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from the outward adornment, such as braided hair and wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes, but instead it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. And you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. So by building our relationship with the Lord, being filled with his love, building our husbands, we ultimately build our family and build our children and give them the foundation that they need to deal with this crazy world. So that is the heart of girl talk. That is how the Lord changed me because I was married first. You know, I was was married, my first marriage, I had to unpack all this junk from growing up. And then the Lord allowed me to remarry. And I have this, you know, wonderful man who we're, we're raising our children um, the right way, (laughs) you know, based on, on God's word first. And so- I'm sorry, but even as you're talking, it makes me think of John, you know, in the vine and how, you know, Mm -hmm. I think so many times in parenting and we do this in life, like as women, right? Like we are just trying to think of the solution for the problem. So just give me the fix. We'll do the fix. And then we'll move on to the next, you know, and kind of keep going. Mm -hmm. And so much, I think of what I'm, I'm learning, like as a mom, as a wife, as a leader, as a a daughter of God, right. Is that so much of all of those other relationships, all of those other tasks and responsibilities have to come after that connection to the vine that I am daily getting that source of life and renewal and wisdom and strength from God first, so that it flows out into all of the other things, you know, and it makes me think of how you were talking about how they're so busy, right? Like, and I think everybody's feeling that. I think women are feeling that families are feeling that churches even. And so 
even being able to make the hard choice of creating boundaries for your family or making the hard choice of saying, I'm sorry, we can't, we can't add another thing to this season. You know, um, you're not going to be able to make the hard choice and the hard decision without being able to first connect with God and know the why behind how you're answering some of those questions for your family. Yeah. And so, so many times I think we are living reactionary to just whatever's coming at us and okay. Yeah, I guess we'll do that today. You know, we'll figure it out tomorrow kind of thing. And then we turn around a couple of days later, wondering why we're so stressed out and overwhelmed. And it's like, there's no, um, there's no structure and intentionality, I think, to how we're building the foundation, exactly like what you were talking about from Proverbs. And so I just, I love how you're kind of reminding us that you do get to lead your family, like, right. We are getting to influence, we're getting to protect, we're getting to bring life and value and worth and all of those things to what God has given us to steward. And with that has to come that connection to him and that wisdom and that grace and that love and, and so forth. And so it's, it's hard work. And I think, um, slowing down even as moms, um, to be able to really kind of identify what does God want for our family? What does God want for me and my daughter and those kind of things. And it's really when we start to slow that we see maybe some of those issues or those fears that you're talking about really kind of boiling up, not only within us, but then within our kids. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I many think- I think moms, I don't know. I, I think if, from all of this, like if we could tell moms, like some, like just like one thing f- hearing from girls and like knowing how stressed they are and knowing how, I mean, even middle school, high school, college girls, like they are all saying that they have so much to do. And I think moms have the best intentions and in like wanting their kids to do everything. But something that like I've watched Lindsay do for so long is like, they like, you can do one thing a semester or like you can, I mean, sit, make sure you're sitting down at the family table for dinner every night, like just things like that, that, and then there's just things to like, what you are talking about, just protecting your family and protecting your family time. And Jenny Allen posted like a while back, just about her kids and how like you have 18 years with your kids at home. And like, if they don't have like 5 million best friends in high school, like they're going to be okay. Like they're going to go to college and they're going to make friends. And like, they're going to, I mean, you have time to, you have 18 years at home with your kids. And like, that's something that Lindsay does so well is just like having your kids at home is really the most important thing because they really want it. Like there's going to be some girls that rebel back and act like they don't want it, but that's really where girl talk started is with like the knowledge and wisdom of knowing like girls really want, they want their mom or they want someone older than them that's pouring into them. And so if they don't have their mom, like they're going to look for it somewhere else. And that's kind of where we started in the beginning. Like girls are looking like they're looking for the security and the wisdom that like a mom figure will give to their lives. And so like, if you have that ability, which we believe like all moms have the ability to do like what God has called them to do. Like if you have kids, then God's given you that, that purpose and that like the everything you need is first Peter one, three. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, um, and so I think moms really, I would love moms to know that like your, your kids don't, they don't want to be in everything. Even if they tell you they do, like they're, they're so tired. Like we just hear from girls all the time. They get excited and they want to be involved because they think that's Mm going to, you know, give them something that they're wanting. But at the same time, I think the thing that, you know, I just keep, I remind myself and I remind other moms, you can say no with a smile, just put a, just put a smile on face. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I love you. And we're just going to take some time at home and just enjoy being together and play a game or, you know, I don't know that I'm not a funny person, but if I start crossing my eyes at the girls, you know, that just makes them laugh. So that's the biggest thing is the kids want something they can look back on. Even as they get older, they want to have those things or, or they will appreciate having those times that they can look back on and say, Mm -hmm. we always did this. This is the foundation of who we are because we did this together. Well, and I want to kind of point out, um, it's not like you're telling us to, okay, you can't be in that organization. And now we're going to sit at home and do, you know, like apologetics on why dinosaurs are no longer here or, you know what I mean? Like, I think 
as I talk to moms and as I have just kind of watched, there's so much pressure that I think moms kind of fall to in thinking they have to have all the answers, right? Like they have to have all the solutions to boy problems and depression and gender identity, you know, and all of those things. And I think that's where they get really frozen, right? Like it feels so overwhelming, the things that are coming at them and we don't have answers. And what I love in what you're saying is that you're not, you're not sitting them down and taking them through a curriculum. Although sometimes that's a good thing, right? But like you're saying, Hey, create a boundary and be with your kids, like be intentional. So this also doesn't mean, Hey, we're going to set a boundary. We're going to say no to that thing. And then you're going to spend the entire night, you know, that you would be at, um, X, Y, Z up in your room on your phone, you know, like that there is an intentionality in, I just want to be with you. I just want to know about you. I want to know um, what makes you tick and what you're scared of. And I want to laugh with you. Like it's the relational side, right. Of just getting to be their mom, getting to be their parent, and navigating that together, not necessarily having answers, which I do, Amy, I completely agree. I think that God um, equips us and, and allows us to be able to kind of struggle and wrestle and know our kids. Um, and, and that's the beauty of part of being their mom. Um, but it's also like trying to figure life out together and trying to figure out some hurdles that you don't have the answers to together. And that togetherness is really what brings a lot of transformation, not only in our kids, but in us as well. And I, and when you said those hard conversations, it just reminded me that there are a lot of hard conversations that we need to have with um, our children before they reach a certain age, before they start hearing those things in other places where they're not getting wisdom. Mm -hmm. And there have been many times where I've, I've, you know, just sat down, I've said, Hey, can we talk about this? And they're like, Oh, Oh no. And I'm like, well, we really (laughs) need to. So can we just have this awkward conversation and you just call it out for what it is. Like, I know you're like, you don't want to talk about this with me, but I want you to know that you can tell me anything and I want to have these conversations with you because I love you. And I want you to know the truth about this because there are a lot of different opinions and words and all this all over the place, but let's talk about um, what God says about it and how, and why he says that and how that actually is for your good. And, Mm -hmm. and, And so when you're talking about either, too many activities in school or, you know, dating or or text or texting. And we talk about that all the time, social media and texting at an early age and the benefits and the not so good things about it and all that kind of stuff. Like those are the hard conversations that we get to have with our children. And they are our responsibility because it's a privilege because that, you know, God put them um, in our care and we are stewards. They're, they're his children. They're not just ours. Like he doesn't have grandkids, you know? (laughs) Um, And so, so that, that's the other thing that I always encourage moms in is like, definitely pray about those um, opportunities and, and see them as good things. And even when you're, your child, your daughter starts rolling their eyes or whatever, and just say, all right, give me two seconds. You know, let's just talk about this for two seconds, but I want you to know that I'm aware. And if you ever have any other questions, please come to me. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And I think even part of that too, is kind of what you're talking about with, um, girl talk and the community, like, I remember doing girls ministry and even as a teenager and knowing that there were things that like I could and needed to talk to my mom about, but I also think to kind of bridge that out a little bit more, I think that's also why he gives us the church. And so even in those awkward conversations, really leaning into like, Amy, I think you're such a great resource for your girls to where, um, like there's a, there's a person connected to you that you trust that, you know, is loving the Lord. That is a little bit ahead of my kids, you know, that I can be like, why don't you talk to, um, ours is Macy, you know? So why don't you talk to Macy? Because Macy, Macy's been where you are and she's a little bit closer in your age and she understands it a little bit more. And so I think even having those conversations and being intentional as a parent, but then also really leaning into the biblical community that God has given you in your local church and in your, um, relationships to where you can say, Hey, I, 
why do, I didn't personally struggle with social media as a student, you know, like as a teenager. And so why don't you go talk to her? Or have you talked to your student minister, or your student minister's wife or your small group leader, you know, those kind of things. And just the more support and the more openness that I think we are allowing and pointing them to and saying, it's not just us. Like you've got a whole tribe behind you that is cheering you on that is praying for you, that is rooting you on um, because we believe in you and we see God working in you and you don't have to do it perfectly. Like none of us are going to live this thing out, you know, like to a T, but we're totally living it out together. So, um, so as we're kind of wrapping up, gosh, we are so running out of time. Um, so why don't you kind of give a plug a little bit and tell us briefly, what is girl talk ministry and like, what is your hope? What's your dream? What's your, um, like vision for girls and their moms through the efforts that y'all are doing, um, not only in the local church, but really kind of all across Alabama, Florida, like y'all are all over the place. So give us kind of a little highlight view of what you guys are doing. Okay. Um, I mean, girl talk started like everything that we've talked about, like, that's why we started girl talk because, Girls need to know that they're not alone and they need to know that their mom's there. They want them to know that their mom's there. But on the backside of that, like we want moms to know that they have everything they need to be the mom to their daughter that God has planned for them to be. And so really just coming. I mean, I think my favorite part about Girl Talk is coming alongside moms and just like cheering them on and telling them like they like what I just said, like they have everything they need because that's what girls want. Um, But definitely just building those relationships like with friends and knowing that like you don't, I mean, so I started in Montgomery, which our school system is a lot different there. And so you kind of, it started with like school, like you just had friends at school and you had friends at church. You just didn't really have friends outside of that. And so Girl Talk really started with the heart of like wanting girls to branch out and know that like Jesus is the source of our friendships and like the foundation of our friendships. And so really like every city that we go into, it's, it's a citywide thing. And we're thankful that like all churches kind of pull into it and all schools. And like, we have families that just all, and so you meet girls from all over your city that want the same things as you and you meet moms that want the same things as their girls. And we've seen like people like moms come out of it. that just have the more confidence in what we're talking about, like being able to say no and being able to just like, okay, our kids aren't going to have phones and they aren't going to have boyfriends. And we're just going to, you know, stick into like our relationship with them and their relationship with their, with, with God. And then like, we'll go back in high school and see like all of that. So just community and, um, and wanting girls all over the place to just have that. And I think as we've grown like across the state and just out and I mean, we have missionary families in other countries and just all of that. It's fun to see girls like, okay. Like a few years ago, our girls got to where they were going to college. And so our oldest girls just graduated from college. But I remember there was one year where girls were finding different girl talk girls in other cities and rooming with them in college. No and way. Now they're all sorority sisters and like from all of our like different cities and like we'll see pick like girls just posting pictures with like we know girls from Huntsville and girls from like Mobile and they're meeting at, at Auburn and like and it's just so fun to just see the I mean they have that common like wait you did girl talk too like that's so cool and so yeah. um just having that common like relationship and then moms having the same and just all the things that we we're talking about so we really just want girl talk to keep growing and um, I mean, we have our podcast and we have heart issues that we're writing and all of that. So you're just, to, just to equip moms to understand that they, they do have what it takes. Mm-hmm. Like Holy spirit is giving us what it takes, the wisdom. We can just, all we have to do every day is show up with the Lord and ask him to give us wisdom. And he wants to use us to bless his children, you know, to grow his children, to grow the kingdom so that we can use our gifts and talents to encourage each other and, and, and save the lost. And that's ultimately, you know, our, our goal as Christians is to build the kingdom for God's glory, because when Jesus comes back, he is going to have his bride. And that's what we're doing is we're trying to, you know, present everyone as he's going to present us, you know, pure and blameless before yeah. the throne. So um, that's what we're doing is having, we're studying, we're writing the curriculum. It's a three-year curriculum of heart issues that unpacks every, well, we've come up with nine heart issues to unpack over a semester um, to create the conversations for moms to have with their daughters. I love it. Well, Amy, can you tell us how do we find you? So how do we find the podcast? How do we find your resources? Where do listeners go to find you guys? Um, our website is um, girl talk, girl talk.info. 
And um, you can go there and like all the links are there. We have a link page that is also linked in our Instagram, which is Girl Talk Ministries underscore. <laughs> um, yeah, we got locked out. I think, yeah, I had surgery and was on medicine and I changed the Instagram password and then I couldn't get back into it. And so I had to create another one. So it's Girl Talk Ministries. Don't just Google Girl Talk. It's yeah. Girl Talk <laughs> Ministries. <laughs> Don't Google. Okay. Oh, well, good note. Good note. Yes. Good yeah, point. those are the best. And then we have Facebook Girl Talk Ministries. Um, mm-hmm. So it's the picture with all the paint, the powder yes, paint. If you see pictures powder. with pink paint, powder. Yeah. Girls with paint all over them. That's <laughs> usually all of our pictures because that's our biggest event of the year and um, yeah so but girl talk ministries dot info is the easiest place to find all of our links that's um, the website yes mm-hmm. so yeah, we'd perfect. love to we will make sure to put all of those links and yes. resources in the show notes so if you're listening and maybe you are a mom or maybe you're a youth worker or um, just a woman in the church that has the heart for the younger generation i know that you will want to check out girl talk ministries for their resources the podcast um and just opportunities really to kind of light a fire under you to reach and love and see the younger generation all around you so lindsay amy i am so thankful for today i'm thankful for you sharing your own stories and just how God has used those stories to be able to turn around and love on and see and minister to the next generation. We are so thankful for you. Thank you for having us. We enjoyed it. And as always, ladies, I am so grateful that you chose to spend some time with us at the table. I hope you're encouraged. I hope that um, you're maybe even thinking of younger women in your life. Maybe it's a niece, maybe it's a daughter, a neighbor. I mean, they are all around us. And so I hope after listening to this conversation that um, they they honestly kind of stand out a little bit more and maybe kind of cause you to question and have you take the step of courage of saying, Hey, tell me about you. Tell me about your story. Tell me about, um, some of the fears that are going on in your life right now. And, um, just watch God grow, watch God do what he does. So, um, thank you again for joining us for this episode. And we can't wait for you to join us next week for another episode of at the table. We'll see you then.